Welcome to the stage, Sonia Kelly. Small tech going on. One tech on. Hi. Now, my own light. Uh, this is um, this is something I wrote for tonight. Not going to pretend I didn't, because I did. So, um, my girlfriend Kate and I. Um, that's two people, by the way. I can't make a. <laughs> my girlfriend Kate and I. Uh, my girlfriend Kate and I. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll have to take my glass off to read again. Um, my girlfriend Kate and I, uh, we never go on holidays like just us deliberately, no other reason, beach, dinner, swimming, books. Our holidays are always encumbered with auxiliary missions involving family duties. Annual visits, weddings, engagements, milestone birthdays, uncles we really ought to pop into. It, it just, it's just never just us somewhere nice, away from it all for no reason. The, the from it all bit you're supposed to be getting away from always seems to slip into the agenda. <laughs> so last summer we booked our first proper deliberate getting away from it all and we really mean it this time holiday. We went online and found a lovely old windmill nestled in a clump of pine trees on the Portuguese coast between Sintra and the Atlantic Ocean. And it was love at first click. Pure, basic, rustic isolation with Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. Kate, Kate and I gave each other that look, um, that special look that I imagine scientists give each other when they discover things like penicillin. Um, <laughs> Kate, I cried, Kate, we're going on our very first holiday where we're not forced to wear high heels or pretend we like other people. And she says, I know, I know. And are you sure you don't mind being away when it's your mother's 75th birthday? <laughs> our penicillin smile droop away. <laughs> and we give each other that look I imagine civil engineers give each other when they discover the port tunnel was four centimeters too low. <laughs> Jump cut now to one month later, Kate and I are in a rental car on a three-lane highway outside Lisbon Airport. It's rush hour and we are deeply embedded in the fastest, most dangerous driving culture in the world. I look at Kate uh, 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 gripping the steering wheel with a heady mix of fear and profound appreciation. I don't drive, but I can imagine driving on the opposite side of the road in these conditions. is like a right-handed person playing a left-handed guitar, and if you hit a wrong note, you receive a head injury. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the back of the car, my mother is literally... <laughs> asphyxiating on her own stress hormones, <laughs> gripping the upholstery, five fingers of each hand splayed like bony stars, both feet grinding tracks into the carpet in front of her like she's feeling for the invisible brakes, and from the tremble of her lips, a soft mutter of a rushed novia bur novena burbles through the air. After numerous requests and reassurances, my mother agreed to come with us on our getting away from it all, and we're really mean at this time holiday, and it took some work. She, she wanted to go. What she didn't want was not to be in charge of every single aspect of the organization. Holidays were always part of my mother's domestic jurisdiction. She planned everything, where we went, when we went, what we ate, when we ate, and most importantly, what we wore on the plane. In her mind, I was still a child, and children did not book holidays for the same reason they weren't allowed to boil kettles. This was a joyless science only people scarred by pre-Vatican II Catholic guilt were capable of executing. In her mind, you booked a holiday by, holiday by selecting a resort through a brochure entitled Continental Paradise. <laughs> Or one I'm particular, I remember, um, it was uh, for winter breaks in the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man, it doesn't have to be a dream. I love that one. Um, so, 
re selecting resorts you uh, entitled Continental Paradise, which you kept hidden under the living room sofa. Then you put on your best coat, went to the holiday center, and if the lady you were dealing with was well-spoken with nice hair, you paid for the holiday in cash right there on the spot. To her, a digitally reserved Portuguese windmill was the equivalent of a tiger kidnapping. <laughs> Then came the phone, calls uh, the phone calls precipitated by items she'd heard on the Marian Fanukan. <laughs> Thanks to the Marian Fanukan, my mother's mind is a 24-hour racetrack of thoughts and worries about potential calamities that might befall her at any time but never do. From the moment she wakes until the moment she sleeps, which is never, uh, it, <laughs> it is the end of the world all of the time. Sonia, uh, just a quick call there to warn you about the Atlantic Ocean. Holiday makers die in that ocean every day. I heard it on the Marion Fanukan. A woman was on there about a man it happened to, solicitor and everything. Whoosh, gone. All it takes is one wave, so don't pack your swimsuit. You won't be needing it. <laughs> in the weeks approaching our getaway from it all holiday, I also promise not to sit in the sun, not to use the ATM machines, not to use my credit card, not to accept drinks from strangers, not to carry luggage in favor, uh, for, as a favour for others because you end up in a, in a prison in Thailand, not to drink <laughs> tap water, not to buy mineral water, not to put anything in my pockets and not to hire a car. Now we're on a highway and I know she's upset with me because I lied about the car, but it was the only way to get us there, if I get us there, because my phone is pumping out premium rate GPS instructions in Portuguese and the evening sun is glaring in the window and I'm trying to match up the blue line on the screen with the cemented swirling looping mess of cars and exits in front of me and I have a terrible sense of direction I couldn't get you to the other side of a roundabout there's nothing and there's nothing like a novena on repeat in the background to knock your confidence <laughs> part of me wants just to throw the do door open and fling myself into the road and get it over with all right now but I try to focus on the positives like the gallon of gin and tonic I'm going to sink when we arrive <laughs> The chalk white windmill that waits, us, waits for us perched at the foot of a scrabbly lane that winds down to a billowing sea. The tight-cheeked waiter who will wave us into his ramshackle tavern and flirt with my mother who will call him handsome but working class. <laughs> A mocha-skinned trio of women who will sing fado songs while a tattooed bit of hairy-armed rough in the corner untangles fishing nets and will be eating crispy skin sardines that leapt from the sea to the griddle in one last joyous act of culinary suicide and will be glugging down carafes of wine as the molten sun takes its briny dip into the pillows and sheets of the wild Atlantic Ocean. And then the waiter will sling us a wave as he hands us a bill for nine euro... <laughs> And we, would, we bid farewell in pigeon tongues, then home to sleep under the lullaby of our windmill's creaking oars. Sonia, where are we? I don't know. We're orbiting a roundabout flanked by Ikea trucks, trucks, thumping about in the trunk of the car as the suitcase full of groceries my mother insisted on bringing. Because no four-day mini-break to Portugal is complete without five tins of kidney beans, one pound of butter, flour, stock cubes, three steaks, one pair of rubber gloves and a box of Brillo pads. <laughs> 40 quid it cost me to bring the suitcase full of sundry items intended to save us money. That's how they get you. That's how they get you in these resorts, you know. Oh, two euro for a beer, 20 euro for a box of J-cloths. Well, I'm not paying 20 euro for the privilege of wiping down my own surfaces. I argue, what's the point in getting away from it all if we're bringing everything with us? This wounds her deeply, and I'm curtly reminded that when we were children, the only thing that saw us to the Canary Islands were two sides of ham and a half stone of potatoes we brought with us. It was an ironclad logic tempered by decades of thrift, precipitated by a recession she'd spent my childhood hiding me from. After our seventh complete circle of the roundabout, my mother suggests we drive up onto it, call the guards in Ireland, and tell them to contact the Portuguese authorities. At this point, I resort to my most desperate measure, I pretend I know where we're going. <laughs> Kate, right, right, hang a right, hang a right, it's definitely right. Kate and my mother hit me with a searing duet of, are you absolutely sure? And I mean, in my mind, of course I'm sure. I'm sure the whole thing was a terrible idea. I'm sure I don't want to end my life crushed under the wheels of a multinational home furnishing supplier. Kate hangs a nefarious right. What could be the worst that could happen? Spain? <laughs> I collapse into a sulk and sink and I, 
I imagine Kate imagining what her life would be like if she'd taken that job in Melbourne instead of Dublin. <laughs> she'd be strolling down the sunny CBD with some limber white-toothed gazelle-type beauty on her arm. I picture mum, mum picturing me if, 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 as if I turned into the me she'd pictured, an air hostess or an interior decorator with a wardrobe full of well-cut dresses and thinner upper arms. <laughs> And what did she get? A lesbian playwright with no sense of direction who dresses like Ellen. <laughs> I feel grey, grey as those clouds. Blue, blue as that... Sea! It's the sea! It's the sea! On the evening of her birthday, we all get dressed up and take a bottle of champagne down to the water to watch the sunset. The motley steps wind down the cliff like a bad set of teeth, so I hold my mother's hand to steady her and think how fast time changes in the direction of a grip. One day I am, wobbling to I am a wobbling toddler, reaching out for her. The next, she's negotiating steps, reaching out for me. Life, blink and you'll miss it, hey? My mother turns to face nature's light show, squints into the glimmer and says... Was I telling you I heard on the Marian Fanukan people die in the Atlantic Ocean every day? And I say, yes, yes, Mum. But on every other day, they lived. Thank you. Sonia Kelly.